So welcome to our last topic for the course on correlation and regression. And this is where we want to be able to see if there, if there is a relationship, or in other words, a correlation, between two numerical or quantitative variables. And if there is one, we want to know how do we find it, how do we summarize and describe it, and then how do we finally use it. And additionally, are there any conditions we should be looking at? Are there any unusual features I should look for? Any things that I should just be aware of? So here's a couple of questions that might lead us to say, okay, um, is there a relationship between them? So these questions reflect a desire to understand what is that relationship? What we're going to have to do is to create a plot or a graph to view that relationship. Figure out some characteristics to describe it. Figure out some measures of those characteristics if possible and then have a method to make inferences about that relationship. So in other words, now we want to use whatever model that we come up with. The graph that we create is called a scatter plot. And if you remember your basic math, we have our basic y versus x type of graphing. And in math, remember the x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. In statistics, the horizontal variable x, we call it the explanatory or predictor variable because the horizontal variable x is explaining what's going to happen in y. And then y therefore is called the response or the predicted variable. Usually the easiest terms are response variable and explanatory variable. So one of the things we have to do when we have a pair of quantitative variables is figure out, well, which is the response and which is the explanatory. So for our question, do heavier people burn more energy? We're going to have two numerical variables, weight and metabolic rate. And if we know a little bit about um, medical studies, metabolic rate and calories, that's going to be our response variable. And our explanatory variable is weight or mass, because in general, the more I weigh, the more it affects my metabolic rate. For the wine consumption and causing a decrease in heart disease, the two variables are death rate from heart degree disease and the amount of wine we consume. So the response is the death rate and the explanatory variable is going to be our wine consumption. So here's a plot of our metabolic rate measured in calories and our mass measured in kilograms. And please note, with numerical variables, with quantitative variables, we also have units of measure that are very important to be including. So here's a scatter plot of our response, metabolic rate, versus our mass in kilograms. Now when we have a graph like this, we're going to want to look for some different characteristics, some patterns and some deviations. So for us, one of the first patterns we're looking at is the form. Is it going to follow a straight line or maybe not a straight line? Now for us, they're always going to be linear because that's just in the scope of this course. Is there clustering? Are the data points very, very close together, maybe like these four here? Or are they further apart like these ones and these ones? So that's something that we're going to take a look at. Direction, that straight line, does it look like it's going up to the right? Or does it maybe look like it's going down to the right? So positive or negative. Strength. Well, again, for that imaginary line we're putting through here, how closely do the points follow that line? Are they very close? Are they very far? And then finally, are there any deviations, things that don't look like they fit or don't look like they should be there? In other words, outliers. Here's our death rate versus alcohol wine consumption. And we can see here the form is definitely going down to the right. We have a little bit of clustering down on the low end. We have a negative relationship. If we draw a straight line, the points sort of follow fairly closely. But we have maybe an issue with these four points at the top here, because maybe they look like they don't belong. Maybe they are possible outliers. So to wrap, the characteristics for look for are the patterns, form, direction, and strength, and then deviations or outliers. And we've just taken a look at the last two scatter plots. Now please recognize that unlike previous graphs we've done, for scatter plots there is no shape, center, or spread. 
So that's a very important differentiation. Something we should consider when we're looking at scatter, uh, scatter plots is that is there a possibility of a categorical variable? So you can see here I've identified the male data in red and the female data in black. And we've seen before where, especially for medical studies, we've recognized that you know, we should potentially be separating these. As regards strength, this is something that we're going to have to address. Because if we take a look at these two graphs and I ask you the question, which one do you think has the stronger relationship? The one on the bottom or the one on the top? Now, in class, we would have had the discussion that potentially the one on the bottom looks like it's stronger because the data points seem closer together. And then the one on the top, maybe not quite as strong because they seem to be spread out. But if we actually take a look at the vertical axes, in the lower graph, it starts at zero. In the upper graph, it starts at 40. So these two graphs are actually the exact same data set. They have the exact same strength. It's just changing the vertical scale changed our perception of what the strength is. So something we have to remember is that for scatter plots, the relationship between numerical variables is what we're looking for. The form, again for us, is going to be linear. But the strength this is something that we're going to want a numerical measure for it. We're going to want a number for it. And why is that the case? Because our eyes could deceive us. The formula for correlation coefficient is this nasty looking thing here. It's actually not too bad. The correlation value, the symbol is little r, and is considered the average product of standardized values. And if you like, take a look at these two bracketed expressions here. Well, those are z-scores point of interest minus center divided by spread. So the observed value minus the average divide by the spread. So those are our standardized values. And then we're dividing by n minus one after we summed all those up, those multiplications, and that's where we get the average. For us, we're gonna be lucky. We can get our correlation value or correlation coefficient r right off our calculators or from Excel. Here's some examples of correlation coefficients. The one up top here, essentially zero, doesn't look like there's a relationship. The one in the middle, going upwards towards the right, about 0.5. And then the one on the bottom, almost perfect, of 0.9. Here, the one on the right top, negative going down, a little bit of a relationship, 0.3. In the middle one, going down again, negative 0.7 and then an almost perfect at the bottom right, again going down to the right, negative 0.99. Number of things we need to recognize about correlation coefficient, it's for quantitative variables, it's typically for linear relationships, it has no units. If you go back to the formula from the previous slide, we see that they were standardized values. And Remember for standardized values we take the units away the most and smallest that the R value can be is between negative one and positive one. So here's a perfectly negative, almost perfectly negative correlated. Here's an almost perfectly positive correlated. And then the mishmash in between is close to zero. Positive R means there's a positive association. Negative R, negative association. Zero, typically no association. And we have to remember that R would be influenced by any outliers. Say, for example, for this graph down here, I could put one outlier where my cursor is, and that would change the R value quite a lot. Now here's a correlation applet. Let's see if we can open it up. So here we go. And I'm just going to put some data here. And I'm going to put a relatively straight line. and I'm going to get our correlation coefficient and you can see it's 9.8. I put another data value maybe way over here and you can see how that R value went really really quite a bit lower. So R changes depending on where the different points are. Let's clear all that. Let's make a negative one. So here's another pretty much perfect negative correlation and let's throw 
some stuff a little to the side so it's not ideally perfect. So here we have a negative correlation, point nine, negative 0.91, and here's an outlier way down here. And see how that outlier being down here, if I take it away, it was 0.91 before, that outlier changed my correlation coefficient. So let's go back to our slides. <coughs> Again, going back to our data for the mass versus um, metabolic rate, the correlation coefficient with everybody together was 0.865. Don't worry about this p-value, okay? We don't get involved in p-values for regression. If I actually look at them separately, so here it is together, the females by themselves is 876, the males not so good, 592. Because remember, we don't have as many male data points and they are quite scattered. If I take a look at the death rate versus alcohol wine consumption, looking at all the data points together, negative 0.843. What about these four points up here though? These could be possible outliers. So what would happen if we took those points out? So here's the original one, 843. We have now removed the outliers and notice how the correlation coefficient has dropped quite a bit. And I think that's where we'll stop for right now. And I'll make another video on the continuation of the topic. Thanks.